in. And what we're gonna talk about is some important concepts. And um, what we're gonna talk about in this video is the 12 economic forms of value. Basically, how do businesses make money? And really, what are all the ways that you can make money? Now, this video here is going to go in depth. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is what is a business model? This is very important for you to understand if you're doing a business, so you understand what the basic business model is. You might have these people who are a bit pretentious in business who say, what's your business model? Well, I'm gonna explain that in the video and I'm not gonna to try to overblow it and make it overly complicated. I'm gonna exa say exactly what it is. Then I'm gonna talk about the 12 economic forms of value. The reason I'm gonna give you these 12 ways that businesses create value is because then you'll understand whatever business you're doing, this is how you create value. And then we're gonna talk about a concept that I came up with a while back called the value roster, which is basically how you think about the suite of products that you're going to serve to a customer and how you can tie all these economic forms of value together to make sure you have a lot of ways to make money. So let's get right into it. So what is a business model? Okay, when we talk about business model, we're just basically talking about how your business generates income. That's all it is. So basically, let's say the most simplest form that all of us are familiar with, uh, a service. Let's say you have a lawn service. If you go and you cut lawns and receive payment for cutting a lawn, well, that's your business model. I'm going to cut lawns to make money. Now there's ways to get more sophisticated with this, of course, but that is the basic premise of what a business model is. Now, with these next economic forms of value, you're gonna understand as I go through each one and give you examples how these all work, and you're gonna be familiar with these things, you're gonna say, oh yeah, I, I know what that is, and then you'll start thinking, the wheels will start turning in your head how you can use these, these economic forms of value in your own business. So let's get right into it. So the first form of economic value is a product. Anybody who's gone out to a store, you're familiar with the economic form of a product. So this is any product or any item that you exchange. It could be digital too, like a digital program like this, that you exchange for money. That is a product form of value. So if you go into your local grocery store, you go buy a shirt or something like that, you're creating a product, and then you're turning around and selling that product to an end user or end consumer for money. That's the one we're most familiar with. Now the second form of economic value which is a service, and a lot of us are familiar with this. So this is you exchanging skills for money. So a maid service, you can go clean somebody's house, you do that for money. Um, if you consult with somebody, you have a service that you render to them for money. This is the second form of economic value. Nothing too major there, but then we start getting into the other forms of economic value that some of them you may recognize, but you never thought about what they were called or are not familiar with them. So the next one, the third form of economic value is what we call a shared resource. So, you ever been to your local 24-hour fitness? Yeah, you got it, it's a shared resource. So this is basically a place where you go and you share that resource. So maybe you and 20 other people come into that building and share that building and you're charged a fee to come into that building. That is a shared resource. Um, another good example of this is co-work buildings. When I first did my seminars, I used to go to a co-work building and a lot of times you would pay a monthly fee to use and gain access to that building as much as you wanted. But other people would also pay a fee and we all shared that resource. And this is something that commonly you can see. So you can think about creating your own co-work buildings or something like that as far as a form of economic value. Um, subscription base. Now, this is the most powerful form of economic value. And I promise everybody who ever comes up, I always recommend that they have a subscription-based product a subscription-based product, a product that comes in monthly on residual. But basically is, a subscription can be combined with any form of economic value on this list. But basically, somebody pays your reincurring fee for a service, a product, or any of the other forms of economic value every month. So this is pretty simple. Let's say you got a magazine, and you pay for a subscription to that magazine every month, well, that's a subscription. A website, you pay for a subscription to a website every month, well, that's a subscription-based service. Anything that's provided to you on an ongoing basis, month after month, that's a subscription-based service. So the next one is resale. Resale is basically taking a product and reselling it to somebody else for a fee. So like, like I say, this, is, this one's pretty straightforward too. Let's say you go to a thrift store and you buy a bunch of shirts and then you go resell it to another person. This is resale value. And there's a lot of places that you can go get resale. And we'll talk about something a little bit uh, higher level than that in a second, but this is basically what a lot of the people that you know um, online do. Or if you're doing drop shipping, this is essentially what you're doing. You're just doing it at a white label level, but on the back end, that's really what you're doing. Okay, so let's talk about the next one, a lease. So have you ever went to say an apartment building or you've ever rented out a home or even rented a car? Well, you're probably familiar with a lease form of value. A lease, L-E-A-S-E, -E, is a form of value where you take something that maybe you own and you lease it out to somebody else. I've even seen people take their own equipment, cameras, and stuff like that, 
and lease it out to people so they can make money. And if you've seen a lot of these new apps like Airbnb or you've seen things like um, Turo where you can actually rent out cars on a daily basis. This is crazy. You can get like exotic cars rented off Turo for cheap because basically they've taken that form of value. They knew that this form of value works and they got a bunch of people who can use that value and they make money off the top of it. So this is just creative ways to use these business models in order to be successful. Let's talk about the next one, which is agency. So agency is basically you sell somebody else's services or skills to somebody else and you charge a fee for selling it. So sports agent, ever looked at a famous basketball player and they got these million dollar contracts. Well, you know who else makes a lot of money off of that? The agent, the person who's actually brokering the deal for them. It's agency. Uh, one of the big things I know a lot of friends of mine have are modeling agencies. So they'll go find all these women and stuff who don't know how to get booked. And what they'll do is they'll go to the people and get them booked for a small fee. I mean, a small fee. <laughs> but like 10%, 15%, whatever it is, different modeling agencies have different rates. But this is basically one of the forms of value. Now, this next one is one that you're familiar with, but you probably never even thought about. And it's called audience aggregation. So basically, you have an audience or a group of people who are watching you, and then you charge somebody to get access to the audience. So Instagram influencers, people who have large blogs and stuff like that, what they'll basically do is they'll go out, they'll cultivate the audience because people like them, and then they'll take that value and sell somebody's ability to advertise to that audience in return for a fee. So if you've seen your favorite Instagram influencer and they're dropping, hey, here's my promo code to go buy this, well basically they're using a form of audience aggregation. And if you're somebody who has a large following or you're an influencer, you can use this form of value in order to make a lot of money because you've basically built an audience and people are willing to pay you to get in front of that audience. So let's say you're a fitness person. Let's say you're a person, I have a good friend who did CBD oil, right? You're a very, very prominent person in the marijuana community, right? He would come to you and pay you a fee because he wants to get advertisement in front of that audience. And that's audience aggregation. And that's one of the most least known forms of value that people don't really understand the power of it. YouTube influencers and stuff use that. But that's one that you can really use in order to be successful. Let's next talk about the next form of value, which is a loan. So basically, you can use your own capital. You loan it out to other people and then you charge interest on it to make money. So a lot of people, when you give a loan to a friend, you know, $10 or something like that, $20 here and there, you probably never thought about getting interest on that loan. Well, that's really no different than what all these cash advance places and loans or capital that's loaned out by a bank does. The way they make money is they charge you a fee, or let's say student loans, a lot of people have student loans, they charge you, they give you some money, and then they charge you interest back on that money, and when you pay that loan back, well, they've made a small little profit because they've made money. I remember a lot, long time ago, I was reading a the book, they were talking about the difference between people who were rich and the people who were poor is that the rich people understood that they, they became, they had debtors, right? They had people paying them money instead of getting into debt with other people. So this is another form of value. And this is one of the forms of value you can leverage once you get a bunch of money. And um, you can even go further with this as far as when you talk about stuff like bonds and things like that. And that's a really advanced way to use loans and stuff like that. But I'm not going to get into that right now, but just understand these things are out here and these are ways that businesses create value. Um, an option. An option, you're also familiar with this, is when you go to a movie theater or something like that. So basically an option is you get sell somebody a ticket and they have a, for an option to go see it. So for example, if I go buy a ticket to the latest Marvel movie, I, have, I get a time and I have the option to go see it at that time. I can't go see it at any other time, so that's why it's called an option. If you buy a concert ticket, you could have an option to go see that concert in that city or at that particular time. And this is another form of value that a lot of people are familiar with. So, you know, if you're an artist or something like that, you could sell options to your concert. And just understanding this, it'll make more sense when we get into the value roster, how we tie all this together. So let's get into the last two forms of value, which is insurance and capital. So insurance is, once again, something you're familiar with if you're paying any insurance. So basically, people charge you for you to take on liability for them. So basically, if I give you insurance and something happens, I'll pay for it. But you have to pay me a premium. And the way insurance companies make money is because most people are not going to get in accidents. So each month, if they're not getting in accidents, you don't have to pay a premium. You're just collecting month after month after month. And you can have, provide insurance. So for example, let's say you're a rental equipment house and you're renting equipment for cameras. You could provide your own insurance because most people might not break the camera and then they're still paying you extra money on each transaction. 
because you're making more money. So it's just something to think about. And the final one, and this is the one that a lot of people really want to get to, is capital. Capital is basically when you can take your own money and make it work for you. So for example, if you have a new business and I have millions of dollars and I say, hey, for $500,000, I want 50% of your business, but I'm going to give you all the funding you need. You give me 50% of the business, well, now my capital is working for you. That is a form of value I created just by simply having money. And this is the stuff we talk about at the very high levels of business. While we won't be going into ways to create a lot of capital value in this course, that's just something good to know about all these forms of value. So how do we tie all this stuff together? How do we use these 12 economic forms of value in order to create something that's powerful in our business? Business. And I'll tell you, we do what's called a value roster. Now, if we put these 12 forms of value on the screen so you can see them and just look at them really quickly, Let's take an example that I used a while back in order to understand how the 12 forms of value work. So let's say right now that you're a fitness instructor and you're saying, I'm about to start my business in the next 30 days. And you're thinking about how you make money from this. Well, you see the 12 forms of value. All you have to do is look at long term how you can de develop different forms of value in each one of these sections. And I'll give you an example of this. So first, you might start out by just giving a workout class, right? So what would that be? What type of value would that be? Well, you could look at two options. You could say that's either a product or an option, right? People have an option to come to your course. So you start off with just an option. Well, then you figure out, well, you know, the option is doing good. It's making me a little bit of money. How about I sell a supplement or a shake or something to go to my course? Well, now you have two forms of value that you created, which is one, the option to go to the workout class, and you can also sell the shakes. Then you say, you know what? This fitness thing is doing so good, I'm about to sell a digital product. Now, you have two products and one option in your value roster. And when you're thinking about this, you're starting to see how you can start developing a roster for any business doing this. Well, this is doing so good, you say, you know what? To get people really in shape, I'm going to do a mastermind training each month for my exclusive members. And they have to pay a subscription to get into that mastermind training. So now, people are paying you on a subscription. So now you have four forms of value. And if you're, if you're playing the home game, you might say, oh, can I combine subscription and other forms of value? Yes, you definitely can. But let's say after all that, you're doing so well, you say, you know what? I'm going to get my own gym. I'm going to get my own gym, and I'm going to now charge people a membership in order to come to my gym. Well, now you've created five forms of value because what you've done essentially now is you've created, yes, you guessed it, a shared resource. You see how powerful this stuff is? But let's take it even one step further and get a little bit crazier. Now you're doing so good. You've got your method out there. You start seeing other trainers coming up in the city. You say, you know what? I'm going to go get those other trainers, and I'm going to train them up. And those trainers get so good, you say, you know what? I'm going to start getting you guys booked somewhere. Y'all can go out and speak to people and teach our method to other people. And when they get booked, you take a fee off their booking. Another form of value, which is agency. And you can see how this could keep going over and over again. So usually when I set up a business, I like to take these 12 forms of economic value, and you should do the same, and think about which ones would fit for your business and how you could create value in those different things. By forming this value roster, you can see long term how you can build your business out to create multiple forms of value. And if you once again play in the home game, I'll give you another key secret. Once you get so much money and start making so much money in the business, you have capital, which is the 12th fourth form of value, which you can throw into other stuff to make you more money and make you super powerful in business. So that's the 12 forms of economic value. We went over the business model, went over the 12th form of economic value, and the value roster, how you can leverage this to take any business and create tons of value just by understanding this. And now that you know the different audiences and the different ways that you can use these 12 forms of value, now, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to create a business that's powerful in the next 30 days. Thank you.